In the days before the internet, where Super Mario 64 was the world's most groundbreaking game and the closest thing you could get to WhatsApp was a fax machine, school car parks were littered with cars called estates. Now, an estate is essentially a hatchback or a saloon with a bigger boot, but people are starting to fall out of love with them and instead go for high riding and seemingly more safe SUVs. Now, the car I have today is one of the few estates left on sale, and it's the Volkswagen Passat estate. It's the commuter car we all know and love, but it's far more practical and there's enough space in the back for two German Shepherds for you to bring along on Take Your Dog To Work Day. So you may be wondering, Cam, why are you talking about an estate car? Well, SUVs are starting to be seen as sort of bad for the environment because they tend to pollute more than the equivalent hatchback or saloon. So what I want to know is, does the Passat estate hold up just as well as an everyday family car? But before I get into the review, remember to hit the like button and why not subscribe because we've got loads of in-depth reviews like this and loads of other awesome videos to watch as well. The Passat has always been considered as a bit of a boring car because it's hard to figure out where it sits. It's not a luxury car, nor is it a performance car, and it's not all that stylish either. It just kind of sits in a bit of a gray area. But I think this new model does look really good. It's got really sharp looks at the front and you also get LED headlights as standard on all models. Uh, but the one we've got here is the R-Line. So you have a different front bumper that's got these black trim elements just here. It gives the car a bit of a premium look, but it's still understated. It's smart looking, but you'll be able to fly beneath the radar. Moving further back, we've got these nice chrome elements that run just above the skirts. And this model has the optional 19 inch wheels, which cost about 660 pounds. As standard, our line models come with 18 inch wheels. Uh, but of course, the big thing here is the estate like back end. And you may be thinking, well, what's the point in talking about an estate rear end? It's bigger, right? Well, a lot of estates now take on a more shooting brake form of where the roof line slopes downwards towards the rear to give it a slightly more luxurious look, but you're compromising on boot space. The good thing about the Passat is it's got a nice tall roof line. So if you want to load stuff in the boot, you've got a bigger loading area. It's the small things that make the difference. Now, I don't like being the sort of guy that points out fake exhaust tips. I think so many companies do it. You get fake vents, you get fake exhausts. So long as there's something at the back, it doesn't really trouble me. But on this R-Line model, you get a faux quad exhaust system. And by faux, I mean, I can put my finger through the center and it's just plastic. The actual exhaust is two little outlets just tucked underneath there. I just, what's the point? Now the cars that we get sent are usually loaded up with options and this one is no exception. So I thought I'd point some of them out. Uh, the first one is the ambient lighting pack. Uh, so that adds these lovely lights around the cabin. Uh, that's 265 pounds. We've also got a head up display, that's 540 pounds. And we've also got a panoramic sunroof, which is a 1000 pound upgrade. So what do you get as standard then? Well, on this R-Line model, you get air conditioning, you get heated seats, you got all the buttons on the steering wheel that you could want, and you also get an eight inch infotainment system. You can upgrade to a 9.2 inch panel. However, the eight inch one comes with these little shorts cuts around the edge of the screen. And personally, I prefer that to the 9.2 inch system. The infotainment system is really simple to use. It's very intuitive and it's really nicely laid out. It may look a little bit dull at first, but that's kind of VW's way. They're not ultra colorful. They're minimalist and sophisticated. I'd say the only thing that really disappoints me about the cabin is that if you go for the eight inch infotainment display, you then get analog instruments. Now there's a small digital panel in the center and you can see quite a lot of information on it. However, if you want a fully digital cockpit, and I think it's really worth going for, it really transforms the feel of a cabin. It's a 2,200 pound optional extra and comes bundled in with that 9.2 inch infotainment display. 
Onto the storage. So in the center console, if I pull this back, we've got two decent sized cup holders and they're nice and deep as well. So if you put big cups in there, they're not gonna be sloshing around. And if you've got smaller cups, there's these little grips to keep them in place. So I know it's a small thing, but if you're going on a long road trip and you've got drinks, that's gonna make a big difference. Under the armrest, we've got a nice big deep bin to play with. And there's also a USB-C connector in there as well. Speaking of USB-C, we've got another connection here next to the gear lever, and there's actually no conventional USB connection in here whatsoever. So if you're running an older phone and have a regular USB cable, you're gonna need to use an adapter. There's also a little tray in here, but a standard that doesn't come as a wireless charger. What is wireless though is Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Now this is only really available on the very latest model. So it's really good to see that VW is at the cutting edge of car entertainment. In the back of the Passat, and as you would expect, there is loads of room back here. So I'm 180 centimeters. And if I sit up straight, I've still got plenty of space still to go. I've probably got maybe 10 to 15 centimeters. So if you're six foot or over, headroom just isn't gonna be a problem. The driver's seat is in my position and I like to sit quite far back, but still there's so much room to play with. If you sat in the middle, there is a transmission tunnel, but it's pretty small. So you can put your legs either side. And if there's nobody sat here, you can pull down the armrest, which has two cup holders in it. It's also got this weird third cup holder that is super small and I can't think of what on earth you'd put in there. But if you know, let me, uh, let me know down in the comments. So installing a child seat, there are two isofix points at the bottom of the seat and they're covered up by these little caps. So when you take them off, try not to lose them. Our model has got climate control back here, but there's no smartphone connectivity. In the video, I said there was no connectivity in the back of the VW Passat, but I was completely wrong. There is connectivity in the back of the Passat. It's behind a small little flat back here. You get a USB-C charger and you also get a 12 volt socket as well. So if you're running low on juice, you can uh, charge up. Open up the boot and you'll find 650 litres of luggage space, making the Passat Estate one of the most practical cars in its class. You can also lower the rear bench to open up the maximum 1,780 litres of space. Of course, the big benefit of an Estate is you've got a nice low load lip. So if you're a Passat owner that likes going to festivals, you can use this as a makeshift caravan. Come on, chaps. In you get. Nice one, chaps. Now in our line trim, our Passat has a two litre TDI diesel engine developing 187 brake horsepower, and it's connected up to a seven speed DSG gearbox. You can also go for 1.5 litre petrol engines and a two litre diesel in a slightly lower power output further down the range. At the top of the range is the GTE plug-in hybrid. It's the most powerful of the bunch, producing 215 bhp, but you can also travel on electric energy alone for up to 34 miles. Pretty decent. I love how in the cabin of the Passat it says that it's a Passat, <laughs> as if you needed reminding that you were behind the wheel of a Volkswagen Passat. Joking aside, what's the Passat like to drive? Well, there's no denying that it's a big car, but the combination of a really responsive steering system and also an engine that responds as soon as you put your foot down on the accelerator means that you never feel like you're driving a big car. It's by no means nimble, but it's maneuverable. It's easy to live with. The steering, while devoid of any feedback or weight, which it doesn't really matter, this is a Passat, it doesn't need to have sports car handling, but it's really nice and light. And it just does such a wonderful job of making you feel as though you're driving a small hatchback instead of a gigantic estate car. What makes this particular model, the R-Line, so easy to drive is that it's got a suite of driver assistance. So for instance, I'm cruising along on the motorway, I can set 
the active cruise control and if let's say I'm doing 70 miles an hour and the car in front of me slows down my car will slow down with them. I've also got lane keep assistance so when I'm driving along it'll gently nudge me back into the road if I stray onto the white lines. But I guess in general over something like an SUV you're dealing with a lot less mass, a lot less body and you sit closer to the ground so the car is far more maneuverable. This like I said earlier isn't a small car if we're looking at the equivalent SUV we're looking between a Tiguan Allspace and a Touareg and those are very big cars. There's barely any wind noise and road noise is kept to an absolute minimum and that's no surprise because the Passat is a commuting god at the end of the day. A lot of the buyers who get this are going to be buying them through their company which is going to make the GTE plug-in hybrid a particularly strong model. But these cars are designed to put up with hundreds of thousands of miles and bearing in mind it's German a lot of those miles will actually be kilometers and they'll be done on an autobahn going far faster than 70 miles an hour. So if that's the case if the Passat estate is so brilliant why do people keep going for SUVs? Well I can think of multiple reasons people tend to like sitting higher up in cars and while ultra car fans like myself and I'm sure many of you like to sit as low as possible and feel as close to the road sitting high up is is just a, what a lot of people enjoy doing and I completely understand why. Another feeling is is a factor of safety the idea is that if you're sat higher you're therefore in a safer position if you were to crash into something and perhaps I don't really want to say this but maybe status comes into it the Passat isn't a very desirable car no one really looks forward to getting a Passat it's almost a car that you feel as though you have to buy. Let's say if I'm a commuter and I know that I'm going to be putting 30,000 miles on my car there's a chance that I'm going to want to use a Passat because I know it'll be able to take it. But the same can be said for SUVs they're all incredibly well built and well engineered now and I can pretty much imagine a Tiguan Allspace or a Touareg to do exactly the same thing. The thing is though is that something like a Touareg has much more cachet than a Passat and I would say the same would go for a Tiguan Allspace. Being bigger cars, bigger family cars, they are inherently more desirable than what is quite a generic estate car. So how does an estate match up with an SUV in terms of price? Well if you take the very entry level Passat, the SE, you're looking at a starting price of 31 thousand pounds and the equivalent Tiguan Allspace is about 35,000 and if you move up a step to the SEL in this case then it's still cheaper than the second up Tiguan Allspace but when you go for an R-Line things become a little bit more expensive. The Passat Estate R-Line, the one that we're driving right here, has a starting figure of 37,300 pounds but our model with all the options added on top of it comes in at 48,000 so it is a very expensive car. So if you want a more premium spec like the one that we've got here it can get quite expensive but the benefit the Passat has over the SUVs is that it comes with a GTE plug-in hybrid variant and because it produces so little CO2 it makes it a superb company car. But I think it's a shame that people are falling out of love with the estate car because this Passat really is a very very good car and a lovely place to be if you are munching miles. But I want to know what you think would you rather have an SUV or do you think we should go back to driving estate cars instead? Let me know down in the comments and I'll come and join you. But that wraps up my thoughts on the Passat estate and estate cars in general. I think the Passat estate is a wonderful car I think estate cars are brilliant but I don't think great cars like this are enough to overthrow the popularity and the rise of the almighty SUV. I always see car journalists do this pose when they're looking at the engine but it is so awkward and uncomfortable. I'm, I'm not doing this again.